Ibaka got a weird case, why is he around? Certified lover boy, certified pedophiles. Wop, 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 that fuck him up. Wop, 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 I'ma do my stuff. Why you trolling like a bitch, ain't you tired? Trying to strike a chord, and it's probably A minor. Man, I can't even... I can't even summon a proper yo at this time. That's what I have to do. Again, heavy, heavy, heavy spoilers for chapter 259 of Jujutsu Kaisen. And ladies and gentlemen, I, I must admit, with everything going on in this chapter, I'm a bit sad because this is probably one of the few chapters where I truly feel like JJK is coming to a wrap. And honestly, I feel like I wasn't in this community long enough even though i've been reading the manga keeping up for about three years now i you know, obviously i just uh, started making content on it as of recently but this is one of the ones where i feel like we are truly in the end game and i'm i'm sad man but uh, let's get to, uh, let's get let's get to this discussion man we have so so much to talk about man. so chapter 259 starts off with Kashi I'm almost like Shima. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. So chapter 259 starts off with Yuji, Choso, and Kamo, and Yuji is trying to get some game off of Chozo, but unfortunately, I, Chozo is like, he's, he's saying that, you know, I, I just do it off instinct. I can't really teach it. It's, I, I, I do, do it off muscle memory. It is inherently to myself. And then we actually have Norto Shikamo, who actually breaks it down, explains, obviously, people, uh, again, we have that chapter many, many, many moons ago where Yuji said, hey, man, thank you for being a good teacher. Chozo can't teach for shit. Also, I guess that I must uh, owe Yuji an apology. I thought he was just a little stupid, but no, no, no. Chozo literally says exactly what people thought here. And there's also something in here <laughs> real quick that I do want to say that I said last discussion. I want you I want you all to remember this. So Chozo actually wanted to teach Yuji how to do the supernova, but Kamo actually butt in and said that Yuji should learn a blood manipulation only to know how to stop bleeding and suturing. He didn't want Yuji to do so many new things at one time. He really should do the bare necessities and the bare essentials to what can aid him in this fight. We have the reveal that Yuji also swapped souls with none other than Yuta Okotsu. And I called this, I literally said, I was like, who would the other person be? And it was Yuta. It makes sense why Yuji would swap with Yuta as opposed to Gojo, because Gojo, a lot of his tech is Im imbued with the six eyes. So it's kind of hard because those are just Gojo things, but as opposed to Yuta, Yuta has a domain expansion. Yuta also has way better control over a cursed technique. So I did this definitely makes things a lot better. And also, as far as I know, Yuta has a better understanding of reverse curse technique. Obviously, he can't teach it, but he inherently can know how to do it better. Obviously, when he healed Maki in volume zero. And so then, um, <laughs> we have a magnificent and dare I say downright sexy page of my king, Ryoman Sukuna, where we get uh, the explanation that only by going through the quote unquote cooking process of dismantle and cleave that the Kamido door will be open. It lacks the speed relative to its fire and has a uh, narrow effect range. But I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, to me, if Sukuna needs to do something like this, uh, I think it's literally the, the force of a nuke. Because <laughs> if you split an atom, you know what I mean? If you split an atom like directly in half or split an atom by however, that's how you get an atomic bomb, right? That, that, that's what atomic bombs do. So I think that his curse technique is literally making a, like compressing so many slashes at the same time. He's able to create fire and then like when actually like it's something it actually splits atoms or something. I have no idea. Again, this is just a theory, a game theory. It's okay to be wrong. It's okay. I'm, I'm hyped, man. Fresh off the pages, you know what I mean? And so then we have the Urame with the I will win face for some reason. And dude, Gege has to know about the memes. Gege has to know about the memes. There's no way. This is eerily similar to that Gojo panel. There's no way Gege doesn't know. And so we actually see Hakari, that filthy domain merchant, and Urame look at Sakura's fire. But we understand that because of the intense pressure, they lead to the death of living beings inside the domain. Now, I don't necessarily think it's the domain. I also think it's just the uh, nature of the effect uh, because Sukuna used this arrow on Jogo. And he didn't have his domain active. And then, oh man, oh. Then, before the flames can hit Yuji, Choso actually sacrifices himself and makes a barrier of blood around him to protect Yuji. And Chozo apologizes, saying that he is sorry for being useless during their training. And then Chozo and Yuji are actually in their imaginary soul world, where Chozo actually, you know, had dinner or that little that little uh, picnic with all their other brothers. And Chozo compliments Yuji for learning reverse curse technique faster than he himself did. 
that usually says that it's actually Sukuna because Sukuna's body did it first, but Choso says that it's okay. It's only natural for little brothers to surpass their big brothers. And then Yuji actually tells Choso, no, you can't just leave. You can't just you can't just leave me. And Choso says, right, I need to apologize to Tsukimo too, referring to Yuki. And then Yuji says, you are always by my side whenever times were toughest. That's more than enough. Oh, man, this page right here, man, I ain't gonna lie. I should, I, your boy should have thugged here. I ain't gonna lie. Your boy should have thugged here. We have Choso in the vial, the other cursed wombs, talking to his brothers through the glass. And Kechizu says, brother, I'm cold. And Iso asks if he's still there. Choso says, it's okay. Let's still talk. If we talk together, we'll forget about the cold. Then Yuji says, thank you, Aniki, or big brother. And Choso's charred corpse begins to finally fall to the ground. This is man, man. I, 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 I listen. Chozo quickly became one of my personal favorite characters in JJK. It, it, it really sucks. Um, and we have that fantastic moment with Chozo when he is fighting Kenjaku and he has the death painting wombs behind him and he feels their strength and he, you know, he says, "You know what? I got this." And he charges forward at him. And then even with Yuji, he hasn't known Yuji that long in the grand scheme of things but his love for him is all the same i think that this is one of the best executed deaths in jujutsu kaisen arguably the best executed death in my opinion i feel like we had ample time with chozo i feel like we had a good showing into his relationship with yuji i feel like we knew what his goals and what his mindset were i feel like we had a very good attachment to hold on chozo so i feel like it's very effective this this sucks man it really does <sighs> Boy went out, man. He went out. Let me get an F in the chat for Choso, please. And so when the flames start to cool down, Yuji looks around him and Yuji asks, guys, someone. Yuji is now alone on the battlefield. And we have the narrator saying that Yuji convinced himself he was a cog. No matter what happened, he was meant to fulfill his role. But as the scorched earth's heat begins to push his way, it shook the foundation of his resolve. The resolve to repay his brother who had sacrificed his life to protect him. And just as all hope is looking down for our protagonist, Yuji Itadori. We got big gorilla. <laughs> Babies. Aoi Toto is back in the field. Oh my God. <laughs> With a fantastic, fantastic double page spread with him and Sukuna staring down each other. Oh my goodness. Oh my God. People been asking. People been asking where my ghost at, man. Listen, listen. Gege told y'all. Toto is the type to show up when it is necessary. He's basically Kampachi, right? Basically, basically Kampachi from Bleach. Y'all need him. He's gonna be there, basically. Now, I will, I, listen, listen. Y'all know me, and y'all know me. I'm, I'm keeping the book with y'all. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm, be honest, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't like the fact that Toto has not had that much screen time in the coin games. He's had none. I really don't like it. We haven't seen Toto since what, chapter 133, 134, or something like that? So when I see him almost 120 chapters later, I, I'm a little, I'm a little irked. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Again, this is that world building that I was talking about. Obviously, obviously in the quote unquote biggest uh, video on my channel, but I really would have liked to see like how was Toto feeling about recovering? What was Toto's thoughts on the culling games and all that? Obviously, people love Toto. Gege knows this. Uh, so why? Oh, kind of weird. Why now? It also sets up for something that I am also not really a fan of. People are talking about how the stage is set for Nobara to come back into the story. And I don't, uh, again, we've had more than half of the story with her without it. Um, so for her to come back again, uh, Sukuna is insanely weakened at this point. And also with all the stuff talking about soul swapping and all the stuff as far as imprinting on souls and, and that kind of stuff, literally making me soul being beaten down. I could see some stuff with resonance being played. I it, the, the stage is set for it. it. It would make sense. I just don't like the fact that we've had so much time without them, especially two characters back to back. It would leave, 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 leave bad taste in my mouth. Like people were like a little like upset that Miguel was coming out, like that Miguel came back. Uh, and people were like, what, like, why, why now? So when we do this with Nobara, I kind of, kind of, kind of scratch my head. Uh, I, I wouldn't hate it, but it, it, I, it definitely would not be something that I would love. I would, I will tell you that right now. And so basically, long story short, Mei Mei and Toto hatched a plan to try to get people out of Sukuna's domain range. Like obviously, the, 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 the uh, but, uh, Toto's kind of still unsure what's going to uh, happen because his hand is still 
very, very wounded from when he touched Mahito. It basically, it basically almost completely mutated his hand. So then we have something pretty interesting that I did not, ha I, I, I don't know how true this is. So again, this is, this is the characters theorizing, but Toto says they can't let Yuji know of their plan, um, uh, the plan that Meibei and Toto had, because Yuji and Sukuna were two souls in one body. Even though it's in the past, the connection itself is strong. There's a possibility of their plan unknowingly being spilled to Sukuna. That is kind of wild. I it's a little late in the game for like new plans and stuff like that to be hatched. Um, they're super, super, super intricate. Um, unless again, unless an, a wild card shows up and Nobara comes back and no one like finds out about it. But but then we have Toto trying to lift Yuji's spirits once again, almost just like in Shibuya. He says, "I'm sorry, brother, but the other sorcerers are probably all right." Heavy on the probably, heavy, heavy on the probably. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Unless, you know what? You know what? Let's do some more theorizing. I think, I don't know if Toto will be the type to outright lie to Yuji, because there's the probably all right. We have dudes like Higuruma, like Hashimo, like Gojo and all that, who are like very clear, like dead, dead. Um, yeah, yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, because Toto straight up said with like Nanami and Nobara, like, hey, like, you know, we carry the, their wills on, you know what I mean? Like the, the, uh, the, you know, the ganja bells and, and da, da 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 he had all that stuff that he was saying about those that had died, but he says they're probably all right. He doesn't give Yuji the same speech here. So I'm assuming Toto knows something about Shoko that we don't know. Because why else would they take their bodies off screen? You know what I mean? I, I'm I, I'm assuming Yuta's okay. I didn't think that Yuta was dead. I thought Yuta was gravely wounded, but at no point did I think that Yuta was just straight up deceased. Um, I think he was near death because he almost got bisect. And so then we have Yuji stealing his resolve once again, understanding that the other sorcerers for now will probably have to be okay. And he has to believe in Toto's word for now. And then we have Toto and Yuji rushing towards Sukuna with, oh man, this dad, man, this definitely feels like a final battle, man. I'm not ready for Jutsu Kaisen to leave me, man. I'm really not. Oh, what is my channel going to be after Jutsu Kaisen leaves? I know I was just talking about anime in general, but I might have to just... Mainly focus on Kagrobashi forever. <laughs> and then the narrator explains to us that Sukuna is now in a state where it is difficult to use his curse technique after the domain expansion. So Sukuna basically is hovering around five to 10%, if that. And then we don't have a break next week. So lots of stuff going on in this chapter. And again, I'm very, very sad that Chozo is dead. Um, I, Sukuna has had a crazy run. I literally saw a tweet earlier saying someone was like oh i hope sakuna kills somebody next chapter because i'm tired of the plot armor even though sakuna killed literally three other people namely being you know obviously kashibo gojo and higuruba in this fight and he almost killed maki and he, he basically like nearly killed yuta it's like what are we like what are we talking about so i'm very curious to see that what yuji took from yuta's body it's a domain expansion I'll be, i it's a, you and i you and i both know look at me look at me look at, look at me in my, look at me in my eyes bro you're just gonna see my character but look at me in my eyes bro you and i both know it's a domain expansion right so when we finally get that bro <sighs> generation generational greatness but again i i, I love Choso's death, I think, was very well done, right? Um, he had that fantastic moment with Yuki talking about, you know, he doesn't, he 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 feels like he left his brothers behind because he didn't want to see them suffer and all that. And then we have Toto's entrance back into the story. To Toto looking a little different. Um, I do like the the and the Toto's first entrance panel that looks very similar uh, to his first appearance. But then he, the, this, that shot of him screaming, I don't know why. It's some, something about it. He just his face is too square for me. <laughs> Uh, that it usually is how thick his neck is uh but uh i i man you two guys really in his last leg bro that's so I, man i can't believe it bro honestly i think we have maybe maybe 20 chapters maybe 20 chapters left you two guys 20 to 25 if that i can't see it being past anything else um but it's me boy daffy guys just let me know what you guys thinking are what you guys are thinking of this chapter and I'm 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 very curious. I'm very curious to see what's gonna happen next. So we're gonna see some cool choreography. Apparently, uh Chozo's boogie woogie is not the same as it previously once was. So maybe Toto might have to clap his ass cheeks. Maybe the, he might have to clap against somebody else. I I, I don't I don't know. But uh yeah, it's me what after guys. And I will see you in the next video. Now make sure you take care. Now make sure you take care of yourselves, guys. Have a good one. Peace.